So welcome back to the Open yeah. Guitars Factory. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the back and how it fits to the sides, the back edge of the sides, how that side is shaped, and uh, sort of sort of my process of how I go about making sure that everything's going to fit well. This has been the linings are in, and I've already taken the linings down to the height of the sides, and this was all pre-shaped before I put the linings in. If I started with a flat surface here, put the linings in and then and then plane the linings down to the sides, I would lose way too much in the waist because the waist is up higher. A lot of systems use a, a spherical shape for the back. A lot of steel string makers and quite a few uh, classical makers do this as well. And I don't like the look or the feel of a large spherical radius. To me it's too much of a bowl in this area. So I have a, uh, and I can't tell you what the, uh, what this radius actually is, but this stick has the radius on it. And that's a fixed radius across here because that's what the back braces are shaped to, but the radius in this direction is quite a bit larger. So it's asymmetrical. It's a compound curve obviously, but it's not an accurate section of a sphere because of how much larger this radius is. So this particular system necessitates doing a lot of hand shaping and developing an eye for when the curves are fair when, so that you will know that when the back goes on that it's going to sit down without a, without a lot of tension and the lines are going to be clean all the way around. So at this point I have the linings in and the linings are shaped down to the sides which were pre-shaped to a rough to a, a rough curvature and the foot has been shaped. I'm just fine-tuning the foot and the rest of it. So I'm going to do that right now. Let me adjust the camera down a little bit and I'll talk a little more about the whole process as I go here. So I'm getting really close with the linings right now. The stick, which represents the, like I said, the curvature of the back, because that's what the back's braces are shaped to. In other words, here's the back, and if I set this stick on here, you'll see that it matches the curvature of the back. Sometimes it'll move a little bit, depending on the conditions in the wood, and it should be pretty, it should be very, very close. So this curve is the curve that I need that foot to conform to so that when the back sits on here, it's not under a lot of stress. And if I shape it so that the stick is touching the foot and it's touching the sides at the same time, then I know it's going to work. But right now, it's, it's sitting nice and flat right here, but as I come out to the end of the foot, it's still rocking, so I need to drop the end of the foot here a little bit in order to get it to, in order to get the back to sit down it down well on there. So I like to work from both sides because sometimes when you're hand planning across grain like this there's a tendency to dip on the far side so it's good to go back and forth and try to keep that keep that foot relatively flat and check it this way as well to make sure that this is relatively flat or if anything just slightly curved because there is a long, like I said, a long radius going on here, but the flatter the better. So it's relatively flat and I think that foot end is still a little on the high side, but it's getting very close. So basically I'm tuning, I'm fine tuning this right now. Um, again, once I once I get this where I like it, I can set the back on here. I can mark where the braces need to mortise into the linings, notch the linings, cut off the ends of the braces, and set the top in. And at that point, uh, I can actually fine tune the whole thing a little bit more once the back is in, because I'll be able to see how well the back is fitting to the linings. And another thing that's critical is then when, ha when hand planing this, that I keep the hand plane, I hold the hand plane at a slight angle. If I plane this flat, and the back, obviously, and the back goes on with a curvature, the, the joint is not going to be good. Now, you might say, well, how can you possibly hand plane the exact curvature in there that the braces and the curve um, from foot to tail 
add to the back. And, and trust me, you can do it. You develop a feel for this. So all, I, all I'm doing is, and again, I need, to find, I need to fine tune around the edges of this, but I'm not holding the plane flat. I'm, I'm tipping the plane. I can't tell you what the amount of degrees is. It's probably five or six degrees or something like that, but I'm, I'm tipping the plane so that, it's, so that it's curved. And this line across across here where the lining's in the foot, this all has to be in plane. This has to be smooth, but also tip it slightly to match that curve. And again, as you get out here, this, this radius is slightly greater, so I'm actually changing the, the angle of the plane a little bit as I go around. And it, takes, it, takes, uh, it takes some time and some patience and some practice, and constantly looking at the side, looking at the side from all angles, by now I've developed a sense of how high the waist should look when I'm looking in this direction and I can side up the foot and you know all kinds of all, all, a whole number of uh, number of things you're kind of looking and feeling for as you go so I'm actually getting really close right now and so I'll usually go around with the plane set very fine and try to take a complete pass as I go and another way to judge the angle, of course, is to set a straight edge on here and look, but at the foot, because there's a little bit more bulk of wood here, I can take a longer straight edge and set it on here and see how it projects. And now, I suppose I could come up with some measurement of measuring this, but I kind of know what that curvature looks like, and I know that if this stick is sitting on here like this, that it's way too steep, the angle's way too steep, and if it's flat like that, I don't have enough curvature. So I'm somewhere this is actually probably going to be just about right. And again, when I get the back mortise in and I see how it sits down here, I can adjust this angle ever so slightly. You don't want to have to adjust it too much because you've already cut your mortises and your braces are scalloped to the point where they'll fit nice and snug in there. And you can deepen the mortise a little bit or you can deepen the brace scallop a little bit, but the idea is not to have to do that. So again, it takes, it takes a little work and you have to do this a bunch of times to get, a hang of it, get the hang of it, but um, Anyway, this, this is really close, and right now, right now the stick is just, it's just a hair above, above the foot. I can see that there's a little bit of a hump in the center, a very slight hump in the center, and it's not quite touching out on the, out on the end of the foot either. So anytime I approach down here, I like to go ahead and, and make another full pass across the foot to try and make sure that that's, that that line is going to be nice and fair. Okay, that's pretty close. I mean, that's actually very close. So at this point, before I mortise the, before I mark and mortise for the, for the brace ends to be notched into the linings. At this point, I can set the top on here, line it up on the center line, and get it roughly in place from the tail to the neck. There's a quarter, I, I lay this out, the whole thing, so that there's a quarter inch overhang. So I get it in the ballpark, and I know that, I know that I'm going to have to pull the two ends, the back, at, at this point and this point, I'm going to have to pull them down in order to conform to the shape of the sides. Because the waist is pulled in, if you picture a, let's just picture for a moment that this is a sphere. And my, the way I'm doing it, it's not a true section of a sphere because the radii are different. But if it were, you can see how if you had a large spherical surface here, this line, as it, come, as, as it approaches the closer and closer to the center of the sphere, it would be deep, it would be in a deeper part of that sphere. So that's why the waist has to climb up. So the way I figure out whether uh, my waist is too high or too low, now I have a pattern, uh, as an aside, I have a pattern that I shape the sides to before I even get to any of this. So the sides are rough shaped and this point right here is higher than on either side. So picture this conforming to the actual mold and you would see this rise up and then drop back down. In addition to the fact that it's tapered 
from the from the bottom of the guitar to the neck. So you have a taper plus you have the raise the excuse me the waist rising up. So the way I can determine now if I have too much lift or not enough lift in the waist relative to the rest of the lines is set the back on here after these braces have already been scalloped and get down here and look at it and just press lightly down and see what happens with the brace at the waist. If I'm pressing down and there's a big gap underneath, just pressing on the ends, not, not, at, the, not at the waist brace, and I look at the brace that is running directly across the waist, and there's a gap under the brace end and the top of the sides, I know the waist is too low. If I press down like this, and there's a ton of tension, and it takes me all kinds of pressure to get this down, I know that this brace is too high. So again, that's another thing that you develop a feel for. And there's a, there's a visual component to it, too. If I had a guitar here that I could show you and put a straight edge on in this direction, I think you'd see how subtle this, this curve is here. I mean, it, it's, it, it, it's definitely in there. I don't know that I can really demonstrate that now, but... Well, maybe, maybe you can see that. There's, a, there's about three-eighths underneath each end, and that's over 20-some inches. Across here, it's, it's, it's oh, maybe three-sixteenths to a quarter inch, but that's, that's over, less, over less distance. That's about the same arch right there over the lower bout, 14-some inches, as it is over 20-plus inches here. So you can see that this is a smaller radius. So that's pretty much it. The foot, this is ready to go. I'm ready to set the back on here, mark for all of the braces, mortise the braces, and then, like I said, do the final fitting. And at that point, I'll mark where the back strip butts to here and to here, and these get cut off. The whole thing gets fitted in and then clamped up. And so uh, maybe the next video, I'll show you how I do all of that. So until then, Thanks for watching, and um, we'll see you next time.